I welcome you, brothers and sisters, to this Surefire Life Conference platform, the platform the Almighty God has given us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. So we're continuing with our teaching on the abundant life in Christ Jesus. Abundant life in Christ Jesus. Last week, we started looking deeper into um, the specific aspect uh, out of the um, six key aspects that we talked about. We said that the whole teaching of the Synoptic Gospels, you can roll them up into the six headings. It can be more, but we've looked at it in these six headings. Who is Jesus Christ? Special issues and solutions that Jesus taught and addressed. And your daily living as a Christian, duties, services, and practices, wisdom for living, that's number four. And number five, divine power. And number six, leadership uh, model of Jesus Christ. Abundant life, we have seen, is victorious life. Abundant life is that eternal life that God has given us through his son, Jesus Christ. As our text repeatedly emphasized, both in John chapter 10, verse 10b, Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And then our second text, which is from uh, Second Peter chapter 1, from verse two to four, there we see that abundant life is everything pertaining to life and godliness. And so we have been exploring how to experience, how to enjoy, how to make this abundant life our reality, this life God has given us. And so we come to know that in those six headings, as recorded in the Synoptic Gospels, as a summary, who is Jesus Christ? What has he taught and commanded us to live with regards to social issues and solutions? What we should be doing daily as our daily living as a Christian? Wisdom for living. What are the wisdom nuggets of how we should live our lives? Managing relationships handling challenges, difficult situations, handling and having victory in the face of opposition, enemies, trials, temptations, divine manifesting the divine power that God has given to us. And to crown it all, leading ourselves and others to fulfill all of God's will and purpose for our life, just like Jesus did. So we have come to understand that if we can do exactly what Jesus has taught us in these six headings, we will experience the abundant life that God has promised us, that Jesus emphatically said in John chapter 10, verse 10b. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So last Sunday, we went deeper in the aspect of daily living as a Christian. And we have come to the conclusion that for a Christian's daily life, and actually anybody who wants to fulfill life here on earth, Enjoy all that God has created you to enjoy, made for you to enjoy. You have to align your life, your life with God's commandments. Your life must be in line with God's commandment. And God has given us his first commandments. He has given us his greatest commandment. He has given us his new commandment. And all this sum up to one thing, and that is love. Glory be to God. 
let's just recap that in Romans, use Romans uh, chapter 13 to recap that. So as we move on to abundant, uh, this abundant life in Christ Jesus, daily living as a Christian, part two. Romans chapter 13. I want us to read from verse eight. He said, oh, no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness. You, you shall not covert. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up. I want to say that again. Are all summed up. The sum total. Of what God has commanded us to be. And to do. Are all summed up. In this saying. Namely. You shall love your neighbor. As yourself. Verse 10. Love does no harm. To a neighbor, therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is the fulfillment of the law. So we have come to that realization that our journey is to love. Our journey is to love. And to love makes us like God. Make us children of God. Make us to manifest the divine nature. That divine nature that has been given to us is the nature of love. So this is our daily practice. This is our daily service. This is our daily living. Love does not fail, brothers and sisters. As we see in 1 Corinthians, Chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. A, love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. But one thing that never fails is love. So from Romans chapter 13, love is the fulfillment of the law. The sum total of our living is love. But love, brothers and sisters, love is power. That is why love never fails. You want to experience the divine outpouring of the spirit of God through you? Love. In fact, the degree of love defines the degree of God in you. So that divine nature that God has put in us is love because God is love. I want to challenge you. Start the journey of love. Start the practice of love. Start the duties of love. So love is obedience to God's command, God's commandment. That is what John chapter 14 teaches us. Love is obedience to God's commandment. And we know now the first commandment, the second commandment, the greatest commandment, the new commandment, all sum up as one. And what is that? Love. Love for God, love for yourself, love for your neighbor. Because if you don't love yourself, you cannot love your neighbor. As I often um, elaborate what I mean by this love for yourself, not the selfishness. No, it is the love of God for you to see that you cannot. Because love, by definition, simply to put it, is love is that being, that state of being. You be, your being, the state of my being, the state of our heart our totality in which we do no harm to our neighbor, but only good. 
okay? We do no harm to our neighbor, but only good. And we have seen that this is only possible by the Spirit of God. Only possible by the Spirit of God. So, you therefore cannot deliberately do things that harm you. That's where the love for yourself comes from. If you don't have love in yourself, like God has said, the Bible has said, for God so loved the world. This is God's love. He has given us Jesus Christ. If you reject Jesus, that means you don't love yourself. It's so free. If you reject Jesus, you don't love yourself. So this love is different from the selfishness of one, a natural being. We are talking about the agape love, the real love that you love God, and that love is in you to love yourself, not because of you, but for God's sake, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Because if you don't have love in yourself, you cannot love another person as yourself, because that's, the standard is love your neighbor as yourself. And you remember the golden rule. The Bible says, do unto others what you want them to do to you. But if somebody's heart has not been regenerated, the person doesn't care, right? The person will do whatever he feels like to other people and does not care what happens to him. Not because he wants them to do the same to him, but he just doesn't care. So such a person cannot love. So we must distinguish between, when we make this statement, we must distinguish between selfishness that is in the world. The whole world is ruled and led by selfishness. It's only in God and in his son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, that man receives the true love, the love of God. Love that is not selfish. Love that does not seek his own. We know the attributes of love, um, I will encourage you to look at 1 Corinthians, that 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and read from verse 1, those attributes of love and practice it. So I was coming to the point that love is measured by the obedience to God's commandment. So obedience is the demonstration of love. So if your child does not obey you and then keeps telling you, I love you, I love you, know that that love is partial. That love is incomplete. Anybody who loves another obeys, is obedient, is loyal to that person. So the love of God in particular is measured by obedience. Let's look at John chapter 14. Let's read it from verse 23, from verse 23. Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Did you see that? This is the only measure of love, brothers and sisters. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. He will keep my commandments. And we know his commandment now. What is his commandment? Love. The love, the God kind of love, not the selfishness, not the love that says, oh, you didn't give this to me, you didn't give that to, you, to me, and then you don't love me. The love that comes from the heart, from the spirit of God, that is in you, that is in me, that divine nature, the nature of love. So, if anyone loves me, John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my commandment. He will keep my word. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. This is the measure of love. He will keep my word. The word there is in singular, not plural. So it is his commandment and the commandment of God. The commandment of Jesus is to love. So love is measured by obedience. And when we obey God, obey his commandment, 
Start this journey of love and grow in love. And let love overwhelm, overtake every aspect of our life. God manifests himself in us, manifests himself through us, and we enjoy the abundant life that he has promised us. So this law will drive us to do a number of things as we've talked about duties, services, and practices. So let's uh, look at a few other um, specific elements of what Jesus taught that we should do. I'll continue to read 24 to 25. He who does not love me does not keep my word. Can you see that? Now, words in plural. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. So Jesus told the disciples who were present with him there at that point. But this applies to all who have become the disciples of Jesus Christ. Love. This is it, the measure. So remember the summary in Romans chapter 13, verse 9. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, because the Spirit of God that has been given to us renews our conscience and we know what is right and what we shouldn't do. It removes the selfishness. Every time we act in selfishness, that spirit will check us. So it says, and if there is any other commandment are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love. You shall love, we shall love. Beloved brothers and sisters, if anyone doesn't obey God's commandment, both specific and the commandment of love, that person cannot say he loves God. The Bible is very clear. John chapter 14, verse 24. He who does not love me does not keep my words. Those that are still arguing about what has been written down clearly, spoken, spelled out by Jesus Christ. They don't love God. You may claim you love God. You may claim you love God. But your actions will show whether you love God. That's why we're talking about daily living as a Christian. It's all about the practice of love. Let's see other things then. Having received love, because that's the nature of God, by the spirit of God, you are to walk by faith. You are to walk by faith. So I will just list a number of things. You are to live by faith. And you remember who is a Christian that we shared. All we're teaching is still going deeper into this message the Lord gave us. Who is a Christian? Have you received the spirit of God? And the nature of God that is love, for God is love. That same spirit of God produces faith in us. We are to walk by faith. We are to walk by faith, live by faith. So you put that as number two. Number three, that just trying to put things that we should do daily, practice. We are to pray. This is all what we've been taught in the Synoptic Gospels. Remember, if we go back to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. You must learn to pray. And even when Jesus was departing, he taught the disciples pray. So daily practice of a Christian. Number one, love, for that is the fulfillment of all the commandments. Number two, walk by faith. Number three, pray daily. You must have your prayer time. So Matthew chapter six, if we start reading from verse eight, therefore, 
He said, do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. He said, in this manner, therefore, pray, pray. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we've seen how Jesus demonstrated the habit of prayer. As we've been studying the scripture, we have seen that sometimes he will go to the mountains and he will spend the whole night praying. We've gone through this. So I'm just summarizing and bringing out the point. So Jesus taught us to pray. And Jesus himself prayed. And we have also taught it here. You must have your prayer schedule. Don't pray ad hoc. Have dedicated times for prayer. Actually, the Bible says we should pray always. We should pray without ceasing. We should pray all the time. Luke chapter 18. Look at it with me. Say, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Men ought always to pray and not lose heart. This was Jesus Christ teaching in Luke chapter 18, verse 1. We've talked about the four parts of prayer. Thank God. Worship him. Honor him, just like we've seen there in that book of Matthew. And then the aspect of requests. Requests. And requests in two parts. The first part of request, intercession. Standing in the gap, pleading God's mercy for yourself and for others. And then the second part of requests, asking God for your needs, to meet your needs. So that makes the three parts, the first thanksgiving, the second part, intercession for yourself and others. And the third part is making your request simple, straight, clear, known to your father. Because your father hears when you ask him. And then the fourth part of prayer is thanking God that he has heard and has answered your prayer. This is how simple prayer is. Glory be to God. So daily living, Lord. Number two, walk by faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because he that comes to God must believe that God is, and he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Walk by faith. And number three, prayer. Number four, is the word of life. Your Bible should never depart from you because it is there. When you study the Bible, that the Spirit of God teach you or teaches you, brings the light of what God has commanded to you, to me, to us. And so the word of God, you must have dedicated time. That's why we're taking time to study the synoptic gospels. Oh, glory be to God. We started from Matthew. We've read through Mark. We've read through Luke. And now we are studying the book of John. Glory be to God. Then number five. Number five is... You must be a witness. You must be a witness. If you love somebody, you always fellowship with that person. That's the prayer and the studying of the Bible. 
that is your meditation, your consciousness, that is your love, all that is in the space of fellowship. Now, you have to speak about that person, right? And Jesus Christ clearly commanded and said we should go into all the world and make disciples. He did not say it must be pastors only. He said we should go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Matthew chapter 28. Let's read from verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth when he rose from the dead. 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. Amen. Speak about Jesus. Witness about Jesus. Those are the five key things. I believe as a Christian, if you practice, you will enjoy God's abundant life and you will bear much fruit. This is in the aspect of daily Christian living. So I want us to also then look at very quickly, because we are studying the book of John, let's look at how John, if you're familiar with um, the theology of the book of John, you will hear about seven um, I am of Jesus and seven miracles of Jesus that the book of John focuses on. But let me start by telling you that you should disabuse your mind about the number seven, because there are many, there are more than seven I am of Jesus Christ. Um, if you remember, the book of John actually concluded, let's go to John chapter 21, which is the last chapter. What I'm saying is, let's read it with me. John chapter 21, verse 25, he says, and there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. Verse 24, this is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And who is that disciple? Verse 23. Then this saying went out amongst the brethren that this disciple, that is John, would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die. But if I will, that he remain till I come. What is that to you? So this is John, the beloved, the one who was very close to Jesus. So with that statement that concludes the book of John, you know that there are many other things Jesus did that have not been written down. So coming to tie ourselves to the number seven, seven miracles and seven I am of Jesus Christ is uh, just for the sake of bringing out what John has written down. Jesus means a lot more. Okay, but well, let's look at this in the context of who is Jesus. Remember, we have said Jesus is the Messiah. Matthew clearly captures that. He is the Christ. He is the Son of God. Matthew chapter 16, you can look at that again. And all through the book of Matthew, and again, the book of John reemphasizes this. But I want us to come to this seven I am. And I expand, I want to expand that to the eight that Jesus himself said. So let's start from the first one. The first one, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. And you see that in John chapter 6, 
because we're studying the book of John. So I want us to address this. John chapter 6, verse 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. Oh, what a life, abundant life that Jesus gives. I am the bread of life. The second one, I am, the second I am, is I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Let's see that in John chapter 8. John chapter 8, if you look all the way uh, from verse 12, then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I want to move quickly. Number three, Jesus said, I am the door, the door or gate. And we see that in John chapter 10, verse 9. John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And will go in and out and find pasture. I am the door. Number four, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And that is in John chapter 10, verse 11, rather. John chapter 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. The fifth one, quickly. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And we see this in John chapter 11. John chapter 11, you can read all the way from 17 to 27, but I'll just focus on verse 25 and 26. Glory be to God. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Hallelujah. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus turned around and asked them, do you believe this? Do you believe these brothers and sisters? Do you believe that I am? Hallelujah. Number six, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14, verse six. John chapter 14, verse six. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let it be settled in your life that there is no other way for man to be saved except through Jesus Christ. Number seven, Jesus said, I am the true vine. John chapter 15, verses one through six. But let's go straight into verse five. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches he who abides in me and I in him. Be as much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Jesus said, I am the vine. I am the true vine. In verse 1, he said, I am the true vine. In verse 5, he said, I am the vine. So Jesus Christ is the I am. The I am. The one who is always with us. If you can grasp Jesus, as the I am and the various I am that he said he eats. I am the bread of life and you will not, never go hungry. And if you go and study the scriptures, you see every time Jesus announced who he eats, he demonstrated it. For example, in that John chapter 6, when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, he declared this after he fed the multitude with two fishes and five loaves of bread. He fed 5,000, and they carried remnant. Oh, glory be to God, if you can believe him. As you could see also in that John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, when Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, he demonstrated it. He brought Lazarus back from death. He raised a man that was dead for four days back to life to demonstrate that these are not just theories. 
He is who he says he is. He is who he says I am. <laughs> he is the I am that I am. So let me add two more and then we will pray that I said Jesus added two more. Glory be to God. The additional two is that Jesus said, I am the Messiah. And often people say, oh, Jesus didn't say anything about that. Jesus said, I am the Messiah. Where do you find that? Let's go back to John chapter four. While Jesus was discussing with the woman at the well, the woman said to him in verse 25, John chapter 4, verse 25. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I, who speak to you, I am he. I am he. I, who speak to you, I am he. So Jesus said, I am the Messiah. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. If we also go to John chapter 10, Jesus said, I am the son of God. The one people say he never said. So John wrote down. Let's start from Verse 33, John chapter 10, verse 33. The Jews answered him saying, for a good work, we do not stone you, but for blasphemy and because you, being a man, make yourself God. 34, Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the world, the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. Do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world? No, that word, the father sanctified. <laughs> oh, you know, in natural sense, people will say, ah, that one has been cooked up. Or oh, that one is, has been anointed, oh, sanctified. The father sanctified his son. He prepared him. He gave him a special body. He gave him everything. He gave him all power. He gave him the spirit without measure. He sent him. The father emptied himself into his son. For the son came out of the father. And that's why you always say, I and the Father and my Father are one. Glory be to God. Till today, people are still confused about it. People are still saying, Jesus is God. Yes, as a deity. But Jesus is not the Father. We must make that distinction. So he said, if the ones who receive the word, the Bible says he called them gods. He said, ye are gods. Those who receive the word, those who receive the spirit of God, lifted to that level of gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. 36, do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blasphemy? Because I said, I am the son of God. Did you see that? I am the son of God. So Jesus is the son of God. Jesus said, I am the son of God. So we expanded the seven I am to nine. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. I am the vine. I am the true vine. Number eight, I am the son of God. Number nine, I am the Messiah. If you can appreciate and believe 
Jesus, just like he asked them there in John chapter 11, verse 26. He said, do you believe this? If you can believe this, you will see the manifestation of the I am in your life and you will enjoy the abundant life. So let me round off with that word I am, John chapter eight. Let's go back to John chapter eight. Let's read from verse 57, John verse 57 and 58, I'll read 59. He said, then the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old. You are not yet 50 years old. And have you seen Abraham? 58, Jesus said to them, most assuredly, most certainly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Why did they ask, say this to him? Because in verse 56, he said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it. I was glad. <laughs> Glory be to God. How did Abraham see his day when he was not yet born in this world, when Abraham was here? How did Abraham see his day? Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. So Jesus here taught them, said, I have been before Abraham was, I am. He did not say I was. He said, I am, I am, I am, I am. I'm the one who has proceeded from God, who has come from God. I am the one who has been with God, according to John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. May the almighty God, by his spirit, pour his divine nature into us. The nature of love and cause us to live in love. And let every corruption of selfishness be removed from our lives. And may his spirit give us the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding of the I am. And help us in our daily life and daily living as a Christian. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So straight away, I want to pray. I want to pray for those who need prayer. Number one, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ. Just agree with me and tell him, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for loving me so much that you gave your love, your gifts of love, your son Jesus Christ, to save me, to die for me, that you might forgive me all my sins. Heavenly Father, I receive your love and I repent of my sin. I forsake my sins, and I confess that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, is my Lord. And from today, Lord, I ask, give me your Holy Spirit, the power, the strength, your divine nature in me to live for you and to do your will. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God has saved you. Jesus has saved you. If you have prayed that prayer, so just take up faith and join us as we pray. Brethren, I want us to pray. The Christian race is still the narrow path. It looks like many have forgotten that it's still the narrow path. With all the abundant life, with all the, the power of God, that, which is the next level we're going to go into. Now that you understand the I am if you can appreciate the I am then, and, and, and the daily living, as we have spoken, then you can be talking about the power of God. I believe the power of God will so manifest in us, for in this world, we are like him. So let's open our mouth and pray and say, Heavenly Father, oh, I yield myself to you. Let your word that you have taught me today sink in to my spirit, soul, and body. And let this word produce the fruit in me. Father, give me understanding 
give me the ability to live and practice this word. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. And if you're sick in your body, right now as you're praying that prayer, just tell him, Lord Jesus, heal me. And he will heal you. Is that faithful? By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Go ahead and pray. Lord God Almighty, thank you for teaching me your word. Thank you for teaching me your truth. Father, let this truth, oh God Almighty, be in me, produce fruit in me. Father, put this truth, write it in my spirit, in my soul, in my body. Oh, hide it in my heart. Father, let this truth, oh God Almighty, continually regenerate that abundant life in me. Reproduce the abundant life in me. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my God. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. And in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Finally, tell him now and say, Heavenly Father, renew your spirit within me. Anoint me for the work of the ministry. The ministry that you have given to me, you have chosen me, called me to fulfill here on earth. As I've told us, ministry is service to God and humanity. Yeah, it is our service. What do we do daily to humanity because of God? Go ahead and pray. God Almighty, renew your spirit within me and quicken me by the power of your spirit to fulfill my ministry. You're calling upon my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Now go ahead and pray your own prayer, whatever is your own request. Go ahead and ask God now, and we are going to agree. And formally close before we go into the discussion. Go ahead and agree uh, to go ahead and pray. Take 30 more seconds and pray. Pray for your needs. Pray for your needs. He is the bread of life, the one who satisfies all our needs. He gives us that living bread, and we will never go hungry. We hunger no more. Oh, he gives us the living water, and we will thirst no more. That living water is the Holy Spirit that continually flows in us. Pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for teaching us. The nine I am, as we've expanded it, according to the book of John, the nine I am of Jesus Christ. The nine I am that Jesus said he is. Thank you, our God. Let this word enrich our lives. Let this word be a fruit in us. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Let's agree. Heavenly Father, we agree right now. In the name of Jesus, the I am. The one who says, I am the bread of life. The one who satisfies all our hunger. The one who quenches all our thirst. The one who is the light. And we can never stumble as we follow him. The one who is the door that opens for us to enter into all the treasures and the riches and the blessings of God in Christ Jesus. The good shepherd that cares for us. The great shepherd. The one who leads us besides the still waters and restores our souls. The one who leads us on to the green pastures. The one who is the I am the resurrection and the life that gives us life, abundant life, the life of God, eternal life through Jesus Christ has been given to us by our Father. God Almighty, we come in the name of Jesus. The I am the true vine, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, the Son of God, the Messiah, our Savior, our Redeemer. And now, Lord, we agree all that we have asked, and much more than we have asked, all you have ordained to be in our lives. Let all be fulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray, our Father, by the power of your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, whatever remains obstacle on our way, let it be taken out now. Let it be removed now. Every iron gate, every gate of brass, Every iron bar, whatever remains as a barrier, in whatever way, in whatever form, be taken out of our way. The Almighty God break in pieces in the name of Jesus, all forms of barrier. And may the door open unto us to access the divine life that God has given us in Christ Jesus. 
May we enjoy the abundant life all the days of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, the sick you are healed. Every oppression of the enemy is terminated, destroyed in your life. So we agree. And we will continue to serve the Lord all the days of our lives. And we'll fulfill all of God's will and purpose for our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is where we'll end. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>